Hola, I am Julio Cesar Mateus, Media and Communication Professor at Universidad de Lima, Peru. My main research interest for the past 15 years has been media education and specifically promoting the development of critical skills in teacher training to understand the media ecosystem and learn how to interact with it. In this video, I will try to paint the picture of media education in Latin America, what challenges it poses and how it may differ from the European landscape. I'll go from the general outlook to more particular elements, beginning with the socio-political context in the region regarding media education, the regulatory frameworks, or lack thereof, how institutions and social actors are involved, teacher training and research output. In Peru, during the past 50 years, we've had our share of military coups, dictatorships, and a perpetual state of social, political, and economic crisis. In such a state of dismay, it's only natural that public services are left to the bottom of the priority list. This is the case for education in general, which in turn leaves media education largely ignored. Thus, political actors have left education on the sidelines. At the same time, the focus of education has been on contents rather than developing critical and active citizenship, even though these issues are substantial to educational policies. This is well exemplified by the results of international assessments such as PISA tests. Year after year, Peru seems stuck in the lowest scoring positions for mathematics and reading. The public debate centers around these results and a national drama follows every time. As a response, Policies are quick to turn their attention towards the contents to be learned by students, leaving behind other necessities such as media education and critical thinking in general. In addition to that, Latin American media tends to be highly concentrated and centralized in urban areas. Moreover, media conglomerates evolve from family-run endeavors and are largely in league with central governments, affecting plurality and diversity and letting agendas be set uniformly. With all this, the educational community does not seem to be aware that we live in a mediatized world and the perspective towards technology seems merely instrumental. How do we promote critical thinking and diversity in a context like this? In a highly concentrated media environment such as Latin America, joined by lackluster education systems, citizens are unlikely to interact with media in a critical manner. Media education theories and tradition in Latin America have been concerned with closing socioeconomic gaps and pushing forward democratic values and citizen rights, but this has not been reflected in public policies. In the region, only a few countries have had mention of media education in some way in their national curricula and policies, while most of them barely touched on the topic by giving some attention to digital literacy and, among all, technological skills. While some governments have recently taken notice of the deep impact regarding media access and connectivity, especially during the pandemic, when almost half a million students had to leave schools because they couldn't attend virtual classes, their attentions have been centered around digital access and some sort of literacy, but definitely not media education. The lack of legal frameworks and public policies has left the incipient development of media education in the hands of international organizations such as UNESCO and some NGOs and private institutions. In the few cases where governments have tried to tie themselves to these organizations, cases of white elephants with a techno-fetishistic perspective have occurred. This is the case of the One Laptop Per Child program back in 2007, which was an initiative aimed at providing low-cost laptops to children in developing countries with the goal of promoting education and digital literacy. It was backed by international tech companies. In Peru, the program gave out 800,000 laptops to school children in rural and low-income areas. The laptops were designed to be durable, energy efficient, and equipped with educational software and connectivity. 
However, it faced challenges including limited internet access and infrastructures in some areas as well as difficulties in training teachers to effectively use the technology. The program didn't have the positive balance in the country and did not consider media education as part of it. In addition to this, initiatives are sometimes voluntary in nature or with uh, limited economic resources, which in turn hinders their impact and sustainability. Coming down from a more general perspective, we have the issue of teacher training. As you might imagine, this is a key aspect for the development of media education and its goals. Latin American teachers receive little in the way of training for media usage and understanding. The past two decades have seen an increase in training teachers for technologies, but ignoring what lies beyond the cold surface of only learning software. While attention has been put on the concepts such as cyberbullying, audiovisual language and hyperlinks, newer and more current concepts like transmedia, big data, programming languages, Internet of Things, gamification, digital identity, open source software, privacy, or lately artificial intelligence are still unfamiliar. The lack of media education training for teachers at all levels and stages of their careers is not surprising, seeing how policies promoting it are inexistent. The newest national curriculum, launched in 2017, included a competence for the development of technological skills, which could have meant an opening for resignifying teacher training in terms of media literacy. In Peru, there are around 500,000 teachers, of which at least 40% are currently in their 50s. A large portion of the school teachers are approaching retirement, which in turn confronts us with uh, the opportunity of filling new positions with future teachers still in training. On the side of us scholars, there has been a long tradition of media education output in the region, ranging from Paulo Freire's pedagogy of the oppressed in the late 60s, liberation pedagogy, and the concepts of educomunicación have been at the center of social movements and education initiatives around the region. To mention some of the pillars for media education in Latin America, we have Mario Caplun, emphasizing on the social nature of learning, Jesus Martin Barbero, proposing routes for dialogue between schools and media, Guillermo Orozco and Valerio Fuensalida with the critical training of audiences, the community development and popular education on Luke proposed by Rosa Maria Alfaro, Maria Cristina Mata, and Jorge Huergo, and the contributions of Maria Teresa Quiroz proposing media as a parallel school, and so on. The essence of the Educomunicación framing has liberation, democratic values, and critical citizenship at their core. Despite a lot of research being available, it's not well organized, doesn't flow well together. It is paramount that we recover the history of educomunicación, weaving a web of studies and pushing the agenda so that decisions in the governmental spheres can be taken and policies set. Though the landscape for media education in Latin America could seem grim, we are optimistic. The pandemic led public attention towards discussion of the infodemics, fake news, and so forth. Access to the internet has grown and familiarity with newer media dynamics is also growing. Teachers perceive they need to understand the media landscape better, and moralist views on the use of digital media seem to be declining. Thank you very much for allowing me this space and I hope this video helps you understand a little more about what we experience in this side of the world.